All right, I got my coffee, I got my session pulled up, and I'm ready to do some mixing on our newest song called I Just Wanna Know You. This song is probably about seven or eight years old, but we're just now getting around to recording it. So today I'm working on primarily the vocals. I've already done a mix down, uh, balance and all the stuff on all my instrumentation and roughly the vocals, but um, I'm having a little bit of a problem getting the vocals to sit correctly in the mix to where there's clarity and it's not too much on the ear. The vocal performance is actually uh, quite complicated. There's probably about 100, 150 tracks on this session and the vocal performance probably makes up maybe a quarter of it. Um, I have my primary vocals on this track and then I have uh, backup vocals on this track and all the harmonies and all the stacks and everything like that. I do have a philosophy when recording. If you can't play it live, then don't record it. But this song is a very complicated song. There's only four people in the band if you take out the backup vocal performance. But this song still does get very complicated and overwhelmed very quick. I'll kind of play back a section of the song, the very end of the song, kind of show you what I'm talking about. This is the very end of the song, so the crescendo is at its height. It's the most dramatic, most loudest part of the song. It's the last chorus, but I've taken that chorus and changed it a little bit and made it a little bit bigger and a little bit more epic. And this is where the most complicated vocal performance is happening. Amongst all the guitars and all of the things that the drums are doing, I have to find a way to bring clarity to every intricate part of these instruments while also letting the vocals stick out and not overwhelm everything. So here it is, I'll play it for you. As you can tell, there's a lot going on in it. There's the drums going all over the place. There's lead guitars buried in there. There's stacks, stacks on stacks on stacks on stacks of rhythm guitars in there. Just to kind of give you a perspective on what I'm working with, with uh, the complexity of the vocals, I will solo those and then play you those right now. Just pray all night it goes It goes to show you I just wanna know you I just wanna know you On oh, it goes So my biggest issue is the clashing of the background vocals and this ambient guitar that I have playing here in the background. Because the vocals are uh, acting as an ambient instrument uh, and then I have a guitar with heavy delay, heavy echo, reverb, that's doing a lot of ambience fills. It's almost kind of like uh, support keys. And I'll show you where that's clashing. What I had to wind up doing, you have to scoop out where the frequency is the most prominent on one track and then boost it where it's the most prominent on the other track. And sometimes if you scoop out 2K, you boost 2K um, on another track. And that's sort of kind of the sort of kind of the instance 
what I had to do with this track um, when it came to these two guitars. So if you kind of look right here, you can see you can see where I have this cut. I don't need anything under 200 because this guitar is all high end. So I have it boosted here at 2K. And so then if you look at my backing vocals down here, um, they're kind of naturally on the spectrum cut at 2K, but where I have them resonating the most is in the highs with this fresh air plug-in right here. I kind of boosted the highs to where if the guitar is living and resonating at 2000 kilohertz, then I have my backing vocals kind of living in this airy, uh, you know, 5K and up, 6K kind of area. And I have them boosted there and kind of cut where the guitar is living. So that's how I'm able to create separation uh, when it comes to the ear, when you hear these things. And contrary to belief, a lot of people try to cut out the most annoying frequencies when it comes to things like that. So you don't want to listen to anything by itself. You want to listen to it while it's, uh, while it's playing with the rest of the music. And if you need to create separation, sometimes you need to use those annoying frequencies. And it doesn't sound annoying because it sits in the correct place. It doesn't sit on top of another instrument. Um, so that proposes the very last problem is where is the most prominent sound in the entire song going to sit? And that happens to be uh, my vocals. Uh, now when it's not my vocals, it's any other lead instrument at that time usually or any sort of prominent instrument that's carrying the song in, in, in the form of melody. The main vocals have to embody the full spectrum, but they have to be accentuated in the area that helps them stand out the most and not stack and clutter on top of other instruments. So let's take a look at the main vocals now and I'll introduce them amongst the other instruments and backing vocals that we were just talking about that and see where they sit, see how they sound. I've already done a lot of mixing on this already. Let's just see what they, see what they sound like. So I think we have some good separation in the um, in where the uh, the backup vocals and the guitar ambient guitar is sitting, and then also the primary vocals. We have the highs of the backup vocals, and then we have kind of the high mids of that guitar, and they have their own thing going on. But then we also have sort of the mids to low mids of the primary vocals, not necessarily boosted, but they're present. So on the vocals, I have a uh, uh, mix rack on here, which is just like an EQ. Sometimes I like to EQ without looking at my, um, without looking at like a kind of a spectral view. I kind of like to close my eyes and just tweak and just listen for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have some uh, compressors on here. Um, and then I have uh, just a plain flat channel EQ that I'm not using. I have MOTT, which a lot of it's used on a lot of electronic music. This is kind of a knockoff. And then I have a channel EQ where I'm kind of boosted and cut at certain places where I felt like it sat right. And then I have kind of a de-esser going on. Um, this is not necessarily a de-esser, but I use it as a de-esser. So the last thing I'm going to let you guys listen to is I'm going to just let you listen to that very last part again, but I'm going to introduce a bunch of instruments. Uh, slowly one by one and just listen just let you listen to the complexity of the performance the drums all the rhythm guitars uh, the lead guitars all the vocals and I'm just gonna let you see how it stacks up how it layers on top of each other and how it turns into a full picture how each brush stroke makes the full painting and kind of creates an energy and, uh, and we'll take a listen to that here right now
So once I kind of tweak these a little bit more, um, you know, my frequencies and kind of get them sitting a little bit better in the mix, another goal that I have is to, uh, you, you, you want to be able to turn the track down as quiet as possible and have it punched through the most, not always, but usually sometimes, I'll usually turn it down a little quieter than usual and see if I can't get it to sound its best at its quiet at its quietest, and then I'll kind of turn it up to where it's appropriate loudness. So after I get done tweaking a few things, I then am going to work on volume automation, which is turning volume up and down. And I'll show you here kind of what that looks like. If I turn on this button here, it will kind of show you the volume automation of the track. And you can kind of see how it's just up and down. And sometimes it's just one word. Sometimes it's half of a word. Sometimes it's just the tail end of a word when it comes to volume automation. And I have this on all my instruments as well. So that's what I'll be working on next as the very final thing that I'm doing to this mix before I send it to the master. Once I master it, that'll be the end of the song and it'll be ready to be put out for release. We'll shoot music videos to it and we'll just do all the things that we need to in order to market the song and get it out for uh, public consumption. All in all, my goal for mixing is, uh, and it's changed a little bit over the years, but my goal for mixing has been to use the least amount of processing possible on a track. And I've noticed that that seems to be sort of the way of really great mixes as opposed to stacking all kinds of plugins and effects on top of a on top of a track or on top of a song you kind of want to just see what you can get away with with the absolute minimum and chances are if you the less you have to put on a track the better it was recorded the more the more energy it has the more magic it has um, when it really comes down to it, when you're recording a song, the magic is in the performance. The magic is not in uh, what you can do to the track to process it more, make it sound more shimmery or glowy or whatever it is, uh, thick or whatever. So that's the thing. You know, you want everything to come from uh, its original point and stay as original as possible. And that's what I try to do, especially when I listen to bands like Silk Sonic or John Mayer, uh, like I mentioned. And um, I notice that their processing is just very minimal when it comes to this stuff. Now, your goal when mixing is not to try to do too many corrective moves or correcting mistakes, but you want to more so sweeten the mix and you want to more so accentuate the magic you want to add that little 1%. You're not trying to fix anything. So that's the goal with recording. And that's the goal with trying to do things um, to do things uh, in the most musical way possible. So there's a little glimpse into what it's like to mix this. Um, there is so much more that sometimes even goes over my own head uh, that I just it would take too long to try and explain stereoizing and frequencies and compressions and this and that. The song is about a loved one, a family member, who uh, was dying and found God through their death. I try to write a lot of music that seems to provoke deeper thought, more so than what the modern pop culture might try to promote. And we try to make our music listenable. There's a lot of things that go into this as far as uh, writing and performing and collecting the gear to bring everything to fruition to have a final product to put out. When this song is finished and we're done mastering it and mixing it, we'll then uh, continue to probably go shoot a music video to it and get all the marketing together for it. And then we will do a release on Spotify and all the platforms that music is released on. It takes a lot of effort. And the thing that makes this carry forward are people like you that might support this music and enjoy this music and enjoy uh, the fruits of our labor of what we're doing here. So this would be pretty much impossible without anyone who supports us in what we're doing. And we hope that we can give something back that would speak to someone's heart and speak to someone's soul and emotions and help them push through and carry through in life. We do all of this ourselves. Uh, we mix, master, write, record, perform, book shows, 
uh, get the budgets together. We do all of these things ourselves, uh, including all the study and time it took to learn how to do this. So we are fully independent. And anyone who supports us and supports this music, we greatly appreciate you because this is the reason, you're the reason why we can do things like this and why we can book shows and keep the venue happy because we meet their quota of their sales and how many people show up to the show and how many people consume the music. We do have a GoFundMe, which you can donate to to help things like for instance, when the song is finished, we will be shooting a music video for it, and we have to pay for that and then pay for the publishing costs. So if you want to help, uh, there will be a link to that. Uh, you're welcome to go there and donate. And uh, just be on the lookout for this song for when it drops on all the platforms. So in case you're wondering what we're doing, this is what we're doing, and thanks for being a part of it.